Welcome to Cast Your Bets, the Offshore Gaming Association podcast with your host, Jim Quinn of OSGA.com and J.R. O'Donnell of Red Zone Sports. Let's get started. Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Cast Your Bets, a weekly podcast where myself, Jim from OSGA, and my good friend, J.R. O'Donnell from Red Zone Sports, try and give you a little insight into the sports betting industry, into some sports books, get you some free winners, teach you a little bit about how to bet, and basically try to make you a little bit happier at the end of the season when you when you count your money. J.R.O., how are you doing today? I'm doing well, my friend. It's uh, real easy to come on here each and every week, but after you have two nice football picks for the listeners, we got the job done last week, and I did my homework, and I'm ready to go and do a repeat performance for the listeners this week. Yeah, you had a couple of fat winners last week. Uh, the Michigan State team beat Indiana and a little bit of a struggle there for Michigan State. But then you came back on Sunday, and that was no contest, though, of the Rams crushing the Cardinals 33-0. Um, I was a happy guy at halftime in that one. I was, you know, just, just looking at myself going, J-R-O is back 2 and O. <laughs> well, you know, last week, Michigan State, you know, and just, you know, to call a spade a spade and to be fair for the listeners, Michigan State was not covering the whole game. They got a nice late touchdown. They were laying six and a half. It was a 10-9 ball game, and it looked like basically we were going to have a win, but not to cover. But Michigan State got the job done. They punched it in. But then when you go to the flip side on Sunday, everybody and their brother sent me Arizona Cardinals as their best play Game of the week, game of the millennium, JR, and listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I had lunch with the coach, and I know what's going on, and Arizona Cardinals is a fat winner. Well, you know what? The more people chirp about that, the more I like the other side, as I knew that the Los Angeles Rams could play defense. I love the speed of the Los Angeles Rams. Everybody and their brother the week before, Peterson, Carson Palmer, the Arizona Cardinals were back, and they put up a zero spot against a good Rams team. It's easy to chirp now, but 33 nothing looks like we both knew something there, and I'm going to just keep rolling this week. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. And that, that takes us into one of the subjects I wanted to talk about this week. I mean, me personally, I always have a little bit of a hard time when I'm looking at a at a team that's just, you know, in the tank in terms of wins and losses, like a, like a 49ers or, or a Browns or, or some of these other teams that just, they don't give me any confidence at all to bet in. And I think that I'm missing the boat there on a lot of this. I've been doing a little more research the last two years because there are some bad football teams that are in good spots that have great ATS records. And especially if you can catch them against one of those teams that the public loves to bet on, like a Packers or a New England Patriots, I think there's some real value there in betting, you know, a poor football team that might have a good ATS record. You know, at the beginning of the season, I I personally thought that the Jets were going to be like who was going to be worse, the Browns or the Jets, you know, and, and, and here we are, you know, going into week eight, the Jets are three and four and they're four, two and one against the spread. Uh, which is a really nice spot to be in on a team that, you know, none of us really gave, I mean, at least, you know, none of the people I know gave, gave a lot of hope to, um, you know, so I think there's, there's also some value there in, in, in your surprise teams because maybe the public hasn't caught up to betting them yet. Maybe you can get a little bit of a soft line there. Absolutely. And if I could throw another point in there, the Jacksonville Jaguars last year just could not cover, could not win a game. And everybody in the world was against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Week one, nobody liked them. Week two, nobody liked them. Now you're getting some good ATS value with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now on the flip side, their defense is tremendous also. But with the point I'm trying to make here now is the lines makers are now catching up to Jacksonville, and they're not that undervalued team anymore as the lines makers are starting to see that Jacksonville can cover the number and the public is starting to bet on them also. So you got to watch some of these surprise teams in the beginning because during the course of the season, you go through the ebb and flow. The lines makers who are just super sharp are starting to catch up with some of these surprise teams. And believe it or not, they're not going to surprise some people anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, you have the Chicago Bears who are three and four straight up, but five and two against the spread. You have the Niners who don't have a single win yet; they're four and three against the spread. You have the Giants who are worse than the Jets, which I still can't believe I'm actually saying that. And they're they have one lousy win, but they're three and four against the spread. You know, so you you've got some teams there that you know there's value there in betting those guys, and there's probably value in betting the line because you know the public's looking at the win loss record a lot and doesn't seem to take into account the ATS record quite as much. Absolutely, that's an excellent point. When you look at the win loss record and you bet these teams blindly. 
that's not the way to go. Obviously, I just throw out the win loss record because everything that I have, the notes, and you know the kind of work I do, you realize the kind of you know in depth handicap and I do. To be successful in this business, you have to work harder than the next guy, and everybody out there is trying to get the edge. If you look at the win loss records, that is a recipe for disaster. And if you look at the ATS records, that's where you got to delve into them. The teams that have the terrible win loss records might surprise you with the ATS, and that's where you got to find the value. Absolutely. I mean, the the 49ers are, are a team that, you know, on the surface, I would never play on. And when we started doing some little research, you know, they're, they're four and three against the spread. I mean, there was a team last year, the New Orleans Saints, they didn't, they finished under 500, but they were 11 and five against the spread. And I mean, you, you talked last week, uh, we were talking about betting against the public and how an awful lot of handicappers seem to, to lean on that or how a lot of, you know, the the public perception, if you will, will say, oh, everybody's betting on this. I'll bet the other way. And you had said, you know, you don't just want to have one one bullet in your gun. And I think you're looking at, at ATS records, especially on some teams that aren't the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers and this year the Philadelphia Eagles, um, you know, you, you've got some extra value. you got another bullet in your gun. Absolutely. Like we talked about last week, the people that only bet against the public, they might look like geniuses one week, but that's going to catch up to them also because sometimes – the public and the sharps line up on the same side. And when you do that, you need to make sure that the, when you go against the public all the time, you're going to get burned week to week. You're going to look like a genius one week, but week to week, you're going to get burned unless you know which the way the sharps are going. And the sharps and the public sometime are on the same side. That's when you really have a winner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Jets are only plus four and a half against Atlanta this week. I think earlier in the season, we probably would have seen the Jets plus six or plus seven. Um, on on that particular game, um, you know the other one that is the, is the Bears. You know now they're on the road at New Orleans, getting nine, and they're one of those teams that I love because they're five and two against the spread. But I, I think that you you and I were talking that they're they're terrible on the road against the spread. They're terrible on the road against the spread, and that nine point line tells you one thing: you either lay the points or you stay away from the game because that is Vegas respect. New Orleans has been cracking people, 52 points. They've been winning on the road. They've been winning at home. And Drew Brees and the offense are starting to get it done a little bit. That Bears line at nine, it looks way too easy to me. And I know I'm not picking that game in the NFL, but it just looks way too easy for me to take the Chicago Bears, a 5-2 and two spread team, against the New Orleans Saints getting nine. There's no way. People are going to bet the Bears two-fisted, and that five and two is going to turn into five and three real quick. Yeah, probably right there. I mean, the Breeze is having a terrific season this year, and those guys can score some points, especially down there in the Superdome. You know, so we need to stress to the, to the listeners out there that it's, it's very important to, you know, look at, look at a lot of statistics when you're picking these games because – I wasn't really that aware. You know, I looking at the Bears. The Bears last year were 7-9 and nine against the spread. But when you bring up things like, well, yeah, but on the road against the spread. So you have to not just look at, at one statistic. You have to look at that statistic plus the other the other things that bring that into play for you on whether or not you want to choose that particular side. Or, you know, a lot of the times I look at these games and like, like you say, that number looks awful easy. That's, that's a game I just avoid. Absolutely. The best system out there is to take some of these games and throw them right out. I go through this in a methodical way. I mean, you just take some of these games and you just throw them right out. You're not going to play that team with counterfeit money. The Bears plus nine is something. You can narrow out some of the games right away off the top and then take some of the games where there is some statistics and some stats and trends that aren't, you know, obvious. So you need to delve into this. The people that do this part-time and the people that do this as a hobby, like, hey, are you a gambler? Are you a casual gambler or, a, or a, do it as a hobby? Those are the people that get t- tattooed. The people that do this full-time as a job, almost as an investment, those are the people that win because basically you just can't spend enough time doing what you're supposed to do right here with the handicapping. Really good stuff there, man. And I know you I know you certainly put the time in, and that always reflects in your plays. We're real happy to see you now on the uh, podcast at nine, 9 and 5 so far through 7 weeks. That's uh, a pretty sweet pushing 65 percent rate that's cashing some tickets that's making some money and i think it's that extra work you're putting in and digging deep into these statistics well you know nine and five 64 percent on the uh, you know on the outset that sounds pretty good you hit 60 percent and you can make some money in this business anybody that's going to tell you 70 75 80 percent that's when you want to turn from run the other way but i'm going to do my homework i'm going to stay strong i have a methodical method i'm just a creature of habit all the time you know and i'm not tooting my horn in reference to what's going on but i've been doing this for 22 years i think i got some 
feel for this uh, game, and I'm going to try to see if I can, uh, you know, put up a couple W's this week. Fantastic, man. So, you know, we're looking at college football right now. You know, some of the really good teams are starting to really show themselves, and you're looking at a game between the TCU Horned Frogs, one of my favorite college football team names, the <laughs> Horned Frogs, at the Iowa State Cyclones. Personally, I like a cyclone over a, over a horned frog, uh, you know, no matter what's going on. What do you think of this game, JR? Well, when you look at this game here, Iowa State is kind of under the radar. They don't get the big hype as the big teams out there. Everybody loves the USC's and the Penn State's and the Ohio State. But when you talk about Iowa State, you almost talk about a basketball program that's doing well. But this year, they're a senior-laden ball club with the biggest game in their, con- in their history of their program almost at home catching six and a half against a TCU team. Now, TCU, you're going to say, JR, why are you standing in front of a TCU team, number fourth in the nation, great coach with Patterson. He comes over and he's getting the job done. And TCU, like you said before, off the air, is not going to run the table. TCU is going to lay six and a half on the road at Iowa State. Now, this is a circled game, and TCU does a lot of things right, but they try to stop the team's strength. Iowa State does not have one thing that stands out. They do everything well. They play defense. They have sideline to sideline speed. They run the ball well. Their quarterback, a senior, is basically going to get the job done with a no turnover, nice short pass, ready to go offense. The Cyclones running back is basically a good running back and he's ranked third in the nation. That's right, third in the nation. And he's going to get the job done behind a big run blocking line now i could go through all the stats and trends that give you tcu as the fan favorite and the public side and the nasty ugly side is going to be iowa state they're catching six and a half i don't think the line's go to go to seven i think actually the line is going to stay six and a half or even drop to six iowa state does the job well they got a safety named cotton moya they got a couple tight ends and they also have like i said a great coach and a great offensive line they get the job done in the trenches it is a big game and i'm telling you right now i am going to play iowa state plus the six and a half i think they take this baby down to the line and i think tcu lays an egg this weekend and i'm taking the cyclone it's a bold bold aggressive play against one of the top teams in the nation jr the iowa state cyclones are five and two this year and i think you're right i think this is probably one of the biggest games in their stadium in quite a long time so for those keeping score out there for those who want to plunk a few dollars down jro is going to take for his ncaa play iowa state plus six and a half at home against tcu that's a that's an ugly dude you love those ugly games those ugly <laughs> wins man i love this one too um looking at a, at a five and two big 12 team um, and, the, and the TCU team might be looking past these guys. So that's a sweet play, Iowa State, plus six and a half. If I can put one more point in here with the listeners is going to say, hey, this guy does his homework. TCU, a Texas team, balmy, humidity. They're going to come off that bus, off the plane into Iowa State, and that cold and nasty rainy weather is going to smack them in the face. It's going to be a nasty, cold, windy day in Ames, Iowa. It is going to be almost freezing. They want freezing rain. They want sleet. And I'm telling you, the boys with the suntan lotion and the sunglasses are going to get off that bus, and they're not going to be used to that any type of what's going on with that weather. Now, weather doesn't decide everything, obviously, with this play. But I'm telling you right now, it is going to be a tough go in a nasty stadium, cold and wind, for the boys from TCU. Yeah, that's another bullet, that weather in your gun there. So that's that's sweet. We'll, we'll look at Iowa State there. Um, covering the spread against TCU. Folks, we will be right back after a short message from OSGA here on Cast Your Bets. The offshore betting industry is totally unregulated. Where can you turn to make sure your money is safe offshore? The Offshore Gaming Association, OSGA. Visit the Offshore Gaming Association at www.osga.com or call them toll-free seven days a week at 877-OSGA-BET. That's 877-674-2238. Established in 1998, the OSGA has been the ultimate watchdog for the unregulated offshore betting industry. They have helped thousands of players find secure, reputable offshore wagering outlets and perform dispute resolution for hundreds of wronged players. 
visit the Offshore Gaming Association at www.osga.com and call them toll free at 877 osga And we're back here on Cast Your Bets. Jim from OSGA over at OSGA.com. J.R. O'Donnell of Red Zone Sports. You can find J.R.O. at pregame.com. And you're listening to Cast Your Bets here. You can find this podcast every single week out on iTunes, out on YouTube. You can hunt it down on the OSGA website. We're in a few other places. That's Cast Your Bets with Jim and J.R.O. I want to take a minute here to just speak about some sports book information uh, that's come to my attention. It seems that every week there's another place running a, a nice special, and it's, it's kind of cute. The Bet Phoenix guys were down in Costa Rica. They have a, a trick or treat special they're running right now for Halloween uh, where they're giving you cash and free play over at Bet Phoenix. They're also giving you just a plain free play bonus. It's got a lower rollover. Uh, the Bet Phoenix operation has been around for a while. Their spooky roll is a 50% free play. Their uh, trick-or-treat special is 50 cash, 50 free play, up to 1500 bucks, which is really a nice bonus. So that might be something worth putting in your little trick-or-treat bag there. Two ways to cash in over at Bet Phoenix. Uh, the other thing I wanted to discuss, and JR, you and I have talked a little bit about bankroll management in terms of placing your bets. We've come out on this program and and uh, whatnot in terms of talking about flat betting as a way to, to make sure you try to turn a profit by the end of the season. And one of the things that I see every year is, you know, guys who, who just don't manage their bankroll at their sports book correctly. So maybe they're winning some games, but they still don't end up cashing out and putting any change in their pocket uh, when they should be. One one of the things that players need to keep in mind is if they're going to deposit, you know, a couple of hundred dollars, they want to deposit enough money to last them for two weeks should they lose every single game. So if you're, a, you know, a $25 better or a $20 better, you might want to send in $300. That gives you 15 bets over the course of two weeks. Um, you know, so that would make it so you cover. You don't want to have to keep sending money, sending money, sending money. It makes you, makes you not feel good at the end of the day. And then in addition to that, you don't want to send too much money because then then you'll never make a withdrawal. If you're a $20 better and you send $1,000 in, you're going to be playing on that money all year long and probably never even make a withdrawal. One of the biggest problems that I see is guys never make a withdrawal. I mean, I don't know about you, JR, but I hear it all the time. You know, oh, I played XYZ and I, I've never made a withdrawal from the place. How are they? And uh, I, find, I find that unbelievable and frustrating. What, what we try to do here is tell people whenever you double your bankroll, Look at making a withdrawal. So take some money out. Stick some money in your pocket. If you send in 300 you get that bankroll up to $600. Take 250 out and, and stick some money in your pocket. You still have your original investment in there to keep playing with. You're still going to be able to play for two weeks, even if you lose every single game. And also, keep in mind, withdrawal limits should be a driving factor. Um, you know, years and years ago, you used to be able to get a ton of money out of these places, person-to-person, MoneyGram Western Union. And now that's that's a, a, a small amount. So you know, if you if a place is only going to do a person to person transaction, a, a money gram or a Western Union for four hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars, you know, don't let your balance get higher than what you can withdraw in two withdrawals. Um, if you're used to using MoneyGram and the place can only send you $400, don't wait until you have $4,000 in your account and then have it take you three months to get your money out. I mean, that's that's just unbelievable. And we see it happen all the time. You know, here's an example would be, you know, Johnny Johnny Football is, is playing over at XYZ Sports. His max withdrawal is $400. He gets his balance to three k and he can only take one payout a week. No matter how you spin that math, it's going to take him four weeks, and he's still going to have $1,400 in there. And that's where guys start getting killed. They start firing away. You see it all the time, don't you, Jared? Guys start firing away, right? Absolutely. If I can jump in here, if you have a lot of money in that offshore account and you're playing with that money over there, you get foolish with that money. You start getting crazy with the parlays, the teasers, the reverses. If you play scared, I know that sounds crazy, but if you play scared and you play that since your last time, you do a lot more focus and a lot more thinking on quality plays. Volume and quantity doesn't win the games. You have a small amount of plays and a small amount of large plays that are going to be quality. That's how you make the money. The more money you have in there, the more tendency to be foolish. Yeah, I have a friend of mine. It's funny that the guy only only tells me when he's winning when he's down to his last twenty bucks. He calls me up like, "Hey, man, I turned my my, my last twenty bucks into two hundred. And I'm like, "Take some out." 
because <laughs> <laughs> then he'll end up start firing away with that 200 and the next thing you know he's, he's got nothing left and that's that's something i i just hate hearing and and the last point i want to make is an awful lot of players they wait until the very end of the football season to withdraw um you, you players should not be waiting until after the super bowl 70 percent of the public only bets football and that means they're lining up after Super Bowl to, to get their withdrawals, and it's always slow at that time of year. If you're sitting on a, on a pile of money and it's the second week of the playoffs, the first week of the playoffs, grab a couple of hundred dollars out. Do not wait until after the football season and wait in line or maybe have to get reduced payouts or you know maybe run into a problem with a place that you know decided after football season they weren't going to stay in business and continue to pay anybody. And we've seen that happen after football season, too, where places just disappear with everybody money so we always recommend the players make sure at the very end of the football season before the super bowl you draw some money out get a little bit ahead of the curve get some money sticking in your pocket because it's all about sticking some money in your pocket at the end of the day as far as i'm concerned this this week jr we're looking at some nfl games you know i love that rams play last week you know there was a couple of other games in there that i, that I thought were, were quite interesting and this week i i know you're going for an, another ugly moon man i just you know, <laughs> talk, talk to me about some ugliness right well nfl play you know i'm going against those phil Philadelphia Eagles right off the bat. I don't want to take the, uh, you know, I don't want to go drama here, but you know what? The Philadelphia Eagles tuned up Washington on a Monday night. Take the teams out of the equation. Take the Niners out of the equation. Take Philadelphia out of the equation. And teams that went on Monday night that are now playing on Sunday as double-digit favorites are a horrible, terrible, pathetic point spread cover. Now, Philadelphia does a lot of things right, but Peters is out. Hicks is out. Darby's still banged up. I know they're six and one. I know they're well coached, and I know Carson Wentz is having one heck of a season. But let me tell you about the San Francisco 49ers catching 13. That's right, 13 points. They got rolled by the Dallas Cowboys 40 to 10. They have not been rolled all year long until that game. The big stat here that I'm looking at that passes the eye test is the 49ers have lost the last five games. That's right. Five games before the Dallas Cowboys, they lost in a row, and they lost by a field goal or less. Let's digest that a little bit. The 49ers were in those ball games against some pretty good teams, and they lost by a field goal or less until last week when that game got out of control. Dallas ran it down their throats, turnovers, short field, penalties, and everything went wrong against the 49ers. They're embarrassed. Now, these guys are NFL football players. They are all-stars. Everybody on that team is a college All-American. They were embarrassed, and that loss is going to sting them. I'm going to play the San Francisco 49ers plus the 13, and I think Philadelphia is going to win the game, no doubt. But I think San Francisco is going to bounce back strong in this spot. I think the Niners go into Philly. It's an ugly, ugly game. I think basically Philadelphia gets the job done. But they got some holes in that bucket, and you have to agree with me that the Eagles are not going to go 13, 14, and 1 and be Super Bowl champs. They are not respected in Vegas that much yet. Their value was with the Niners after they got rolled by the Cowboys. If they wouldn't have got rolled, this line would be 7.5 or 8. But the public sees a terrible San Francisco team against a great Philadelphia team. They're betting it two-fisted. They got them in every parlay, every teaser, and every verse. That is a recipe for disaster. I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to play a poor, that's right, a poor San Francisco team plus the points against a good Philadelphia team. And I'm going to have San Francisco getting the job done plus the 13 is my NFL pick. Nice, man. I mean, that's one of these plays where I have a tough time because I really, you know, the Eagles are my team and I have a tough time betting against them. I did once earlier this year and it didn't work out for me, so now I'm stung twice. But, you know, we're talking about the Niners at the top of the show with this ATS stuff, 4-3 and three against the spread this year, you know, which is which is a really nice number for a team that hasn't won a game. You know, and, and you're right. I mean, it's Wetzel, Delphia. It's, you know, they're going to the Super Bowl on every single sports radio station. And I just, you know, I'm not, it's not that I'm not a believer in the Eagles, but they're, they're certainly going to lose a couple of more games. And this is a tough spot for them. You know, they might be looking past this game. The public is betting it a ton. So you got a nice angle on this game, too. You know, so I, I think that although I may not bet this game, I think I kind of like where you're coming from, at least with it. The listeners out there should definitely take a look. The San Francisco 49ers plus 13.
Absolutely. It is Wenzel Delphi. And hey, the guy was a great pick. Nobody's going to badmouth the front office for Wentz. He is a smart quarterback. He gets it done. He's got some receivers that catch the ball. But Peters and Hicks are two big players that are going to affect Philadelphia down the road. They also are banged up a little bit in the secondary. I don't think Darby's 100%. And San Francisco, if they weren't that quality team and they weren't hanging in there, if they were getting blown out every week, this would be across the game off. But you got to admit a couple things. San Francisco, for as bad as they've been, they have played some tough teams when nobody wanted any parts of them. They had played some tough teams and hung in there tough. Philadelphia off a Monday night, fat and happy, rolling into the stadium, smiling. Everybody's going to be fat and happy. The Eagles are going to be, you know, green. It's going to be tailgated. But I'm just going to take an ugly team. 27-17, 24-14, 31-24. That's a win for Philadelphia, but that's also a win for me because I'm taking them ugly Niners to get the job done. That's fantastic, man. So you're looking at taking the San Francisco 49ers plus 13 on a number that's been in flux pretty much since it opened against the Philadelphia Eagles. So to recap, get your pencils out. You're taking Iowa State plus 6.5 against TCU, and uh, you're taking another dog, the San Francisco 49ers, against the Philadelphia Eagles for JR's two picks of the week. Hopefully that you can continue that role you've been on. I do want to spend one last second talking about some of the things we hear on our phone line, some of the things we get in our email. I know this week we heard about two more brand new sports books at OSGA, places we've never heard from. Um, you know, we're pushing 20 years in business. If I haven't heard of a place, I wouldn't recommend ever sending money to them. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what kind of pitch or what kind of bonus they're giving you. You know, you shouldn't play with a brand spanking new place. 95% of the places that go out of business have been in business less than two years. It's, it's that big a number. You know, when you have places around like your bookmakers and your bet onlines and, you know, some of these places that have been around 20 years and have 50,000 customers, you're going to go play at a place that has 50 customers and has been around for three months. It just makes no sense to me. And I'm going to warn every single player out there now, if you call me, if you contact Dave and Matt on our chat lines at OSGA.com and we say we've never heard of a place, that's all you need to know. That the conversation can end right then and there. If I never heard of a place, don't play there. That simple. Hopefully somebody will pick up on that and I won't keep getting these calls about, hey, I found uh, you know XYZ Sportsbook. What do you think of these guys? Well, if you found them, that doesn't mean you found them. That means they found you. And if somebody finds you and calls you out of the blue and you never have heard of the place before, or we've never heard of the place before, and you look at their website and it looks like it was put together by a fourth grader, you know, certainly not the kind of place you want to send your money to because they're going to steal from you and you're going to end up calling me crying the blues, you know, three months from now. Uh, so that's the Sportsbook Round of the Week. Sorry to get a little bit on my soapbox there, but it, it just makes it tough for us when guys get stiffed and, and there's literally nothing we can do. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that I don't get too many more of those horror stories this year. You know, that about wraps it up for this week's podcast. Um, time sure flies when we're having fun on the show, JR. Absolutely. You know, it flows smoothly. We're doing a nice job here. It's some great content. We got nice winners here. We got a track record. You know, people that come on the podcast, first time listeners, nine and five record out there at 64 percent they can go back and look at it hopefully they know we're knowledgeable enough to go against the public and hopefully they know we're knowledgeable enough to put some winners out there with research this is not uh you know this is not rocket scientists this is some real strong research to do this successful you got to put the time in and nobody's going to say that jr doesn't put the time in because i am crazy when it comes to football season yeah man it's a grind man it's definitely a grind especially if you bet every single week now people can go over to pregame.com and find your plays um you're going to have some you, you doing any of the world series out there yeah, I'm doing a little bit of the World Series. I mean, it's Los Angeles Dodgers are just that much better than everybody else. I hate playing those dollar seventy, dollar eighty, dollar yeah. ninety favorites. You know, what I mean, I love to tell people yep. to play the Dodgers. Anybody can pick those Dodgers at minus seventy. The World Series. To answer your question, I'm not a big World Series fan right now, only because of the lopsided lines, and it just doesn't do anybody justice to give out those numbers. I was in the waiting room of the doctor's office the other day, and. Uh the girl who's the receptionist there told me that she thought the Dodgers were going to win the World Series. So, <laughs> you know, I think it pretty much says it all. She's been minus 170 for sure today. Um, oh. You know, JRO, great talking to you again this week. I hope folks out there, you've, you've had a, a nice time listening to Cast Your Bets. Uh, look for us on iTunes. 
Look for us on YouTube. Uh, look for us on the OSGA website. You can sign up and, and get this podcast every week. Uh, we'll shoot, shoot you an email, and you'll know when it's available. Um, JRO, I hope you have a spectacular weekend. We're looking for some big, fat winners from you with those two picks on the show, maybe some more stuff over pregame. And you can always find me, Jim, over at OSGA.com. Happy to help you out with anything you need with a sports book. Good luck out there, folks, and thanks for listening to Cast Your Bets. You've been listening to Cast Your Bets, the Offshore Gaming Association podcast. Check in each week for more inside the sports gaming world. And don't forget to check us out on your favorite social media site and on our YouTube channel at OSGA Sports Betting. Thanks for listening.